Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest back with us today, and it's Mark Fox. Mark has a podcast series with us, and he is doing a series of podcasts to tell people about different conditions and how they actually could be treated naturally and how he could help you. So today he wanted to touch base with you and talk a little bit about post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, and sleep. So I'm going to give it all to Mark, and Mark's going to introduce himself himself in case you haven't heard the first episode which I suggest you do and let him tell you a little about himself and and he's going to go all into it so Mark I'm very excited to have you back thank you for coming back this is awesome well thank you so much for having me yeah um my background is quickly is kind of I'm an ex-rocket scientist so I'm not a doctor um but uh I discovered frequencies and frequency healing about 23 years ago it all came about from my dog who got sick she ended up having bad arthritis in her spine. And so uh, a veterinarian is a very good friend of mine said, Hey, there's this lady that has this magic machine that can reverse arthritis. So that's 23, four years ago, I looked into it and stuff. And so I've been dabbling with it ever since. Um, and so what motivated me to make a product or invent one was I saw that, you know, I'm a rocket scientist. And I don't, believe in voodoo and woo woo stuff. And I'm like, this can't be real, but there's so much evidence that it is. So I'm like, you know, it's criminal for that technology to exist that people can't access it. And so it made me very upset. The machines are very expensive. They're being kind of hidden and held hostage, not hidden, held hostage in clinical environments. We had to go visit the doctor, right? And pay for the sessions and stuff. So I ended up inventing a device that it's called PEMF. It's pulse electromagnetic field. Um, on average, usually about one in 20 people have heard of it before or that technology. Mm -hmm. It's not completely woo woo. And if you look at it from a standpoint of magnetic therapy has been around for 3000 years. Yes. Right? So mm -hmm. at least that's, I think it's the first documentation of it was 3000 years ago. Um, pulse electromagnetic field is what the earth does naturally. So you're engulfed in it all the time right now. Tesla played with it a little bit, you know, 100 plus years ago. And then the 1950s, then the 70s, it started to get traction. So it's still not mainstream, but becoming more and more mainstream. So it's pulse electromagnetic field. It's energy can be put out by these various devices. This one is very super and simple. Um, like I said, one out of 20 people that have heard of it have probably heard of a mat, the PMF mat, like going to a chiropractor, a large mat that you lay on. So the mats um, are fantastic. They have helped millions of people, but they're obsolete. They're, they're old technology. So what I'm trying to do is make something, they've been around for 35 years. They're expensive. There's a lot of pieces to them. They're large, they're bulky, they're hard and complicated to use. So yeah. that was one of the main motivations of making a simple device that you Literally, it's a pocket PMF device. So you pick the protocol you want, you hit play, and you put it in your pocket. That's right. it. That's, is made it as simple as I possibly could. <laughs> Pretty amazing. And uh, like when you have post-traumatic stress disorder, now is there different energy fields, like different energies that can go into your body that helps to calm the nerves? Because each different condition, is it treated differently or is there one specific energy vibe from the from the from the gadget that works uh, and kind of goes into the body and maybe the body knows where to absorb it. Like how to exactly if people that aren't familiar with your device, maybe you can explain it in simplistic terms how it actually works and how it could help. You know the you know the three the three conditions that like we're talking about today. Yes. Yeah, so a lot a lot of PMF therapy devices will put out a sweep of frequencies like eight to ten hertz or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one. This device puts out, it's different in that it's putting out frequency pairs same okay. time, and those pairs change over time. So the, the best analogy I came up with recently, I used to use recipe analogy, and that one's not as good. So <laughs> if you think about a guitar, so you play a note on a guitar. So that's yeah. a frequency. So I hit an A note or an F minor, okay? Right. If I hold two notes at the same time, that's a chord, two or more. Yeah. So chords. So it's playing chords of frequency that's changing every one to four minutes. So on average, a protocol might have 30 to 50 different chords that it's playing. Yeah. And what it's doing 
in PTSD, for example, it's targeting the chord, A frequency and A and B, A and B. A is, in rough terms, is where's the problem, and B is what's wrong with it. Right. That's what it's trying to do. So in the case of PTSD, that is everywhere in your body. So it's every part of your brain, um, your organs, every organ is different, your skin. So it's going through and targeting each one of those. So PTSD is one of the most complex protocols on the device because it's a complex ailment. Yeah. And so it's it's going through like 76 different frequency pairs. Now to answer your question, are they different for each ailment? They are. They're completely different depending on what it is, mainly because it's where is it, what's wrong with it, and the experimentation that's gone on. So where these protocols came from are 8,000 practitioners in 35 years trying stuff right. and fine tuning it. So how did this one end up for anxiety with that exact thing versus the path for this of PTSD is nobody has that history because it's it's a group conglomerate of feedback from doctors and chiropractors and physical therapists that help develop these devices or help develop the protocols. Yeah. Now, you know, people don't, you know, like I know, for instance, like if I was had the discussion with my dad, my dad's not really, un, un, you know, he's kind of like in the box skeptical. If he doesn't see it, he doesn't understand it. And, you know, can you explain to people, you know, how our entire body is run by energy? The world is run by energy and how energy plays such a, such a significant role in our health, in our life in in our everyday living you know because i don't think people realize you know how how effective energy is and how how important it is and how powerful it can be in the healing process of the body well as most of us know none of us are nothing but energy right, right. we're just creating at certain frequencies and it's it's weird and sad at the same time is that your body is you know mechanical it's chemical and it's electrical Mm -hmm. And it's only in the United States that we stopped research in 1930s on electrical therapies. The rest of the world kept going forward. Right. Um, there's reasons for that we don't need to go into, but it's sad that that happened. Yeah. But if you think about it this way to your energy is nothing in the world happens without an energy exchange. Right. right? So if you're making s'mores at a campfire, you're putting mm -hmm. heat to chocolate and marshmallows, right? If you're right. roasting hot dog you have to have energy go from the fire that you you fall down the stairs and break your leg there's been an energy transfer from gravity going to your bone and fracturing it so everything is an energy exchange and if you think about it that way it's taking the energy in a fundamental level it's recharging your cells batteries so your cells have a voltage on them right getting specific it's a voltage at the membrane between the inside and the outside of it, which makes processes happen, right? So right. metabolic processes. And if that voltage gets too low, you get sick. That's been proven lots of times. Yes. Um, this also increases ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. It's the main fuel for your cells. So those two components is it's a, giving your body the energy it needs to heal itself. Right skeptics that are out there yes i'm one of them still okay because this shouldn't work but when you think about it at the fundamental level it does but if you look at you know if you tried to explain on the mayflower somebody what a cell phone was they'd go what now that's <laughs> you know hundreds of years ago yeah but about, nobody would have predicted every person would have a cell phone today right right computing power an MRI, in my personal opinion, is you know they're used millions of times a year across the world. It's well accepted. It's the most magical thing that was ever invented by a human being. It's right. If, you, if your listeners will spend ten minutes and go research how does an MRI actually work, you'll go that's impossible because it's got twelve steps, twelve steps of impossibility all combined together. Right? Yeah. That at you know. Uh, anesthesia, right? All these things, stem cell, DNA sequencing, all the things that we do today is like, take it for granted, would have been crazy 50 years ago. Right. Go all the way back to the Civil War, right? It's kind of nuts that no one knew what an infection was, that infections yeah. existed, that we start washing our hands, right? So mm -hmm. back to your point, it's an energy exchange in the way it can be with magnetic fields like PMF, it can be electrical current, like a 
tens unit. Yeah. By the way, is a thousand times less energy than tens unit. Um, but it could be light, it can be vibration, it can be a number of different things. Right. The way I, my simplest analogy on frequencies and energy is picture a surfer waiting for a wave. Right. The amount of waves that come every minute is the frequency. The magnetic field or output is how big the wave is. Right. So a lot more waves coming and they're a lot taller. There's a whole lot more energy involved. Right. If they're small waves and they're separated, it's very low energy. These protocols are one to a thousand hertz, which is super, that's one to a thousand cycles per second. That's what's called ultra, ultra, ultra low frequencies. Your phone, your cell phone is a million. Wow. That's, so that's a million hertz, which is way, way more energy, which is a good point if I can touch on just for a second, because I get asked this about 10 times a day now. <laughs> is it, e, isn't EMF and all this stuff harmful for you? Well, we already said the Earth's putting out EMF all the time. Right. Pulse electromagnetic fields at low energy are healthy and nece necessary for life, and they're therapeutic. Yes. EMF. Now, they're both electromagnetic fields, and why people get confused, just like light in this room is an electromagnetic field. Right. But the reason those potentially are harmful is your Wi Fi and your phone and Bluetooth. They're much higher energy because they're designed to transmit information a distance. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. radio tower or something pmf is a very small thing that like collapses back on your body i had a, somebody asked me last night my husband has a pacemaker does he have to stay out of the house while i'm using it no it's not going to go more than an inch or two off your body so you're right completely fine with that yes now with someone that has post-traumatic stress disorder when they start using this this gadget how um how are they going to start to feel like what type of changes will they notice in their in their bodies they all describe it different. And what's in the top of my head uh, is because it was an hour ago, this guy mm -hmm. called me because I was really skeptical. There's no way this should, thing should be working for PTSD. He goes, but it is. He goes, it, it, I just unwound. Right. So everyone describes a little bit different. They lease something unwound. It doesn't feel quite right. I'm not sure, but I feel calmer. My wife's made a comment that I'm not as agitated. The kids have made comments, right? So I have a list of many, many, many testimonials. It's interesting to look at how people yeah. just, and they don't really know how to quite put it in words, really. It's like, yeah. um, I just feel better. I've had a few cases with extreme PTSD and with fibromyalgia and extreme diseases. It'll make people feel worse sometimes at first episode or two and they'll call me up and that's really a hard one for me because I don't want to tell people if it's making you feel worse keep doing it right but I hint that you might want to keep doing it you know and see if it gets better so that's happened in a few cases where it's releasing toxins or it's trying to unscramble the badness in your brain your body's yeah. trying to do that so I don't know the answers to all that but it's that part's interesting most people well, we have a 95% success rate with PTSD. So I know that's wow. unbelievable. I don't believe it, but it's self-reported by the people. They take a 20 questions called PLC-5. It's the Veterans Administration Questionnaire. Yeah. Zero to 20 and a four is the highest. So 80 is the highest score you could get. And people, so when I say 95% means when they started 30 days later, they self-reported again and then they came down. Wow. About a third of them, and this is the negative part, will say, mm, I'm not sure if it helped me or not. I'm like, really? So I get on a Zoom call like this. And I show them, you self-reported at a 72. 30 days later, you said you were a 12. And Stacy, they'll start crying because they forgot they felt that bad. You know, and yeah. it's kind of a weird thing. And and I've had this happen a couple of times too. People go, well, I don't think it's helping anymore. And it's sent it back to me. And then they'll call me up and go, I need it back. It was helping me. And I didn't realize it was. So can I buy another one? <laughs> buy it back. Yeah. So, so PTSD, yeah. And, or slash trauma, because that gets, it gets too stereotype PTSD, trauma together. I mean, it's, it's not military alone, right? It's in fact, the number one cause of trauma in the United States is car accidents. Right. And so it can be a number of things, miscarriages, 
bad husbands, bad relationships, bad kids, yeah. right? friends did something to you that, you know, all of that drama. So um, yeah, huge success with PTSD so far. And we got, we got a large sample size, so I could fight off all of the Facebook haters with statistics on PTSD. Not all, <laughs> all the elements, but that data, yes. Now with anxiety, is that, does the, the energy from, from the gadget like make you more calm? Does it, does it, it have like a calmness to it? Yes, it's exactly that. It's just making you feel, and it's actually one of the less or least complicated protocols. I think it's only, it might only be, I have to look at one or two frequencies. There might be one or two chords in there that's running and it's just going after I'll get it wrong, sympathetic, whatever. I get those two systems wrong, but it's just going to calm you down. I've got, and the one reason we concentrate on it is people don't know this, anxiety is the number one ailment for human beings on the planet. Yeah. It's the largest one. Yeah. So, and it, it seems, that one seems pretty simple. There's a high, high success rate. I wish I had more real data from people reported so I could make reports and stuff on But yeah, I've got, uh, two friends that are scared to death to drive certain trips because of bridges being too high. Right. They can go over those bridges. Uh, multiple people have reported airplane flights. I'm scared to get on an airplane every time I take off. And now I'm not. I mean, I'm, and they're waiting for it. They're waiting to get petrified. Yeah. At yeah, takeoff. Yeah. No, and then it confuses them. They're like, oh, well, I've always gotten super scared right here. Why am I not scared? Of that? So, right. There's a, a lot of that, that, and it's very common with pain protocols. If you're in chronic pain and you run the treatment, people will they'll say some term like this, something's not right. And you go, is the pain gone? They go, I don't know, just something's not right. So the body isn't trying to process that as like, there was pain there, now there's not, but they don't, they don't articulate it that way in their speech. Yeah. They don't they don't go yeah the pain's completely gone not very many people anyway right yeah that's kind of weird how they try your brain's trying to wrestle with change and what it's doing now that's not there anymore right so right there's injuries like uh i don't know how i woke up with sciatica this morning which i've never had but i did but you know if you injure yourself your body's going to stop you from doing things like mm -hmm. don't extend that leg. So I'm hobbling. I hobbled over to the chair here. Right. right? <laughs> don't extend your leg the whole way because you're going to hurt yourself. So then when the pain's gone, your brain many times will still go, oh, well, you're not supposed to extend your leg. So it's some, Stacey, I've saw, seen some crazy stuff in the clinic where you have to reteach people how to walk. Yeah. Like you have to walk backwards on toe to heel and heel to toe and toe to heel because the pain's gone in their legs now, but their brain's telling them, ah, uh-uh, you got to protect that area because it's broken. And oh, now wow. It's, now it's not broken anyway. So a lot of the therapists do that, go through, a, and the patients will go, we want me to do what? And they make them do some funky looking walks and walk like ducks and do strange things to retrain the brain that it's okay to do this now because yeah. that, he's gone. So. Wow. But yeah, That's anxiety is like one of the largest ones. And you, you with COVID and everything else in, in the world as anxiety is like one of the major things to go after. And it, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, we, we have lots and lots of testimonials on that, but getting the actual measurement data on that specific one, I, I don't have enough to keep the Facebook haters away. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody goes through certain degrees of anxiety. I think everyone has anxiety. It's just different levels at different times. And then some people have it more severe than others. You know, but that this is a, a great gadget just to have, I think, in your home. You know, this is it, this is great just to, you know, when you do feel anxiety, when you do feel stressed, if you're tossing and turning at night, you know, it, it's it's I think it's it's an amazing tool to have that you could just take out of your cabinet and and you use it when you need it also. Because it does it have to be used on a daily basis or could it just be used when needed? No, it does. And then what we initially recommended was people to use it i did what i recommended was use it three to four times a week for 30 days but what i was basing that on was trying to get results within 30 days or not right and how many sessions 
did you have to go to the doctor if you were going to the doctor? And that's what the practice kind of was is 12 to 16 sessions. If we're not seeing improvement, yeah, it, it means we might have the wrong diagnosis, right? Which is a challenge a little bit with this because people are self-diagnosing. They're deciding what's wrong to try mm -hmm. it. And so I'm having to tell people before you return it, if it didn't work, I'll talk to me because then I want to listen to you a little bit and go, yeah, try this one. And then a lot of times so far, 90% of the people have said it's not working for them. I got it to work for them because they were running the wrong thing or I'd listen to their story and go, mm, try using that one instead. And then use yeah. it. So um, was the second part of your question? I forgot now. You asked me something else. Oh, I was asking if, if if it could be like a preventive tool, if you can, if it'd be something that you have in your home and then when, when needed, you could utilize it, you know, versus you know, using it every day. Cause it seems like it also, if you, if you're suffering from stress and, and let's say work is causing you stress, you could start using it. I get the impression where you can, you know, then you could use it on a daily basis until that stress relieves you. Or is this something that you have to continuously do? Because sometimes people have temporary stress or temporary anxiety. And then you know, some people have anxiety disorders where it's you know consistent in their lives. Like you just said, if it's a consistent anxiety thing, you're going to probably want to run it once a day, whatever. If it's what I was going to call situational anxiety, like yeah. we all know this phrase, right? Is the majority of people would rather die than get on stage and give a presentation, right? <laughs> yeah. You're in the business world, and and I can talk to this because I'm a rocket scientist. If you could not present on stage, you'd get murdered. Yeah, that is, it matters. You have to be able to get up there, talk confidently, because NASA, your customer, when they're listening to you speak, they're only going to go one layer deep on the technology. They don't understand it that well. They're just looking for confidence. Does this guy, this woman, know what the hell they're talking about? Or are they projecting yes. confidence? Right. So that's that's your career breaker. So. For presentations, um, yes. So people in the business world that are listening, run it before. I think anxiety is 30 minutes. Run it before you get on stage. Right. Make a difference. Another situational one that we're experimenting with right now that I hope is going to be huge is dentists, mm -hmm. right? So oh, the wow. amount of anxiety is I quit. The, the, the ad that we're going to run is quit torturing your patients right? They know they're coming in. You're going to tell them a root canal isn't that bad, blah, blah. <laughs> wet to them, right? It's like they don't want. So give them that while they're in the waiting room. While you're drilling on their teeth, just put it in their lap. Yeah. And so, yeah, we're hoping that, that that's a big deal for anxiety too. And both PTSD and anxiety, one thing that's I'm really excited about because it's for this whole technology, this gadget, okay, is for people and pets, right? So dogs in the United States, we have 20 million rescues. That means 20 million dogs have been in jail. They didn't do anything wrong. They're in jail. A percentage of those have to have PTSD, right? And we know oh, dogs sure. have yeah. anxiety. They have allergies. That's why they lick and scratch. And so the challenge was to try and figure out how to attach this to a dog and it was Velcro and it's like to their vest and it would kind of fall off. So we ended up inventing a, a, a bandana. I love it. it. Has a little pocket in it that the vibe fits in and it's actually starting tonight. Uh, the testing we're going to start doing is this thing called, it's called a shoe fly for a horse. So it goes around their leg to keep flies off. So they quit stomping. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to use this and modify it and put that in there and start testing with horses to see if relax and balance because this technology is used in the horse industry a lot. Oh, Magna, wow. Wave, Magna wave and some of the other products are out there, but they're gigantic hula hoop rings. They're very, very expensive machines. They're cumbersome. You literally, you're holding a hula hoop. Yeah. Like a hula hoop and you got to go around the horse that way. I, I got bets with people. It's like, oh, that little device of yours can't help with a 2,000 pound horse. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, know. I think it might. So, yeah, so that's exciting too for both PTSD and anxiety with animals. Oh, yeah.
For sure. Now with the sleep, it, it, does it work because of the calmness effect? Because a lot of times when we, we're anxious or we're, our brain is constantly thinking, I know for me, for years, I struggled with sleep because I was constantly thinking about the next thing I had to do the next day. And I was could not get my brain to rest. So is it is it the common effect that the that the gadget has that makes you want to sleep it, it, and, and relax you is how does the the sleeping part work and this is called vibes correct the, the machine called vibe vib yeah the gadget's called vibe vibe <laughs> um it for the sleep protocol again it's like the rest the main core sleep protocols like the rest it just came from trial and error of playing chords and songs to see what worked best with sleep it's kind of taking you from alertness consciousness of where you're at right now and bringing you down to lower theta level oh, brain. Okay. Um, that's why I have people keep doing this when I tell them not to don't go to bed with it and don't keep running it multiple times. Cause it's ramping you back up when it starts over. Right. Uh, okay. So I think the sleep protocol is 46 minutes. So I tell everyone run it an hour before you go to bed. And, um, that's what I do. That is the one, the one protocol that I get the most benefit out. Cause what you said earlier, my wife says, do you ever does that ever stop in there? No. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does not. Okay. So it, uh, it helps me go to sleep better. It's me personally. So for me personally, the biggest benefit to the sleep is my whole life. I've had horrible nightmares. Just yeah. someone kill me, stab me, chasing me. I got to fly to get away. Oh. And this makes me dream of nice, calm, cool things that I like. Or Yeah. I think I told you this joke. I don't know if you can clip this out, but it like makes me think of Halle Berry or something instead of it. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, that's a much more pleasant dream. Um, I don't have this personal data yet myself. I'm going to, but sleep, people with aura rings or Fitbits have been presenting data to me going, they're getting 30 to 40% more REM sleep. I was going to um, ask you. Yeah. Yeah. So they're getting biomarker feedback from aura rings and Fitbits and stuff. Um, that's why I bought one so I could start doing it. But yeah, so just just I feel more rested is your you know subjective response, right? Do I feel better? Do I sleep long? You, you can look at a clock, you know how many times you woke up and you know if you've slept eight hours or six, right? Yeah. So that's not that subjective. But then there's also biomarkers and stuff that we have like that that, that are like a Fitbit, I'm not to promote them because I don't get anything out of that, but a Fitbit inspire three is 79 bucks and it has four things in there that it has sleep we just talked about it has stress it has heart rate variability and it has general wellness right my belief is those four measurements are good biomarkers for any of the protocols that we have right because if i'm sleeping better if i'm less anxious if i'm lower score on my ptsd all those should be better Heart rate variability, by the way, is the agreed to across the board. Number one thing to measure PTSD yeah. is not intuitive. You want your heart rate variability to go up. Yes. Here it is, the healthier you are. So that's a super good affordable tool that people could use to go, go measure. So. That's amazing. You know, cause I, there are so many studies that people go to sleep, but a lot of people don't actually get into the REM, you know, in, into that level of sleep. You know, they don't experience the REM. They're either in a light sleep and they don't realize it. And, you know, um, it's so important in order to have adequate health to ha to try to be in that, that REM. So having a machine like this is so beneficial because, you know, having a seven to eight hours of sleep is so vital for your health and, and re rejuvenation of the body. That's one of the best thing of all the elements we have in the protocol. If you can get sleep, they may fix all of them. Instead exactly. Of the yeah, yeah, for sure. It's we added this week, so there's 59 protocols on there that came from the core stuff that I already mentioned. From other practitioners out there, they so the brainwave entrainment protocols, there's five of them on there that are between one and 30 hertz. So I just put out a new publication that said it adds about 60, 70 more ailments um, that for sleep, for example, it's like theta, right? So just run the brainwave theta. Um, Try not to cry because this is pretty cool. So this happened today. This guy said, my wife has dementia. She hasn't been able to complete a sentence for a year and a half. 
Oh, wow. And she ran one of those protocols when they advanced when she goes, she's making complete sentences now. Wow. I'm like, re really? I go, can you please pick up your phone and give me a testimonial on a video? Yeah, that's... yeah. Right, or oh, have your wow. wife. So yeah, that's pretty exciting. That's uh, very that's exciting. It. We just added some of that stuff this week. So because that, you know, that's a, a little bit to get off the topic, but dementia, you know, it, it's so scary because once you lose your mind, that's it, you know, and you see so many lives and I've known so many people that have suffered from dementia and it, it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible to see the person go through it. And I can only imagine how that person feels inside, you know, uh, they're just totally lost within themselves. So to be able to have a, a gadget like the vibe and to be able to actually, you know, you know, it, it may or may not cure it, but if it improves it and you can actually finish sentences or you can actually think better, or maybe your memory will improve and, you know, you'll be able to, you know, function a little bit better and, and live, you know, a better quality of life. How valuable is that? It's priceless. Awesome. And just to clarify, so the SUVs don't show up at the doors. I don't treat, diagnose, or cure anything, right? Right. It's just, so yeah, you could make somebody's life better and you're not going to cure dementia. You can't say that. Yeah. Good. You can't say that. But right. if somebody can go from not speaking to now they can speak to their husband. Oh, for, yeah. Oh. Call it what you want. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. Now you're you you are offering a special right now. You said you have a coupon. Can you tell everybody about the coupon? We're going to put it in the description of the podcast. But let everybody know that you have a special going on for the vibe. Okay, so yeah, it's, it and put it in perspective because machines range from thirty thousand dollars to you know a, a max going to be about seven thousand dollars. This is three hundred ninety nine dollars. That's what I fought really hard to make it affordable. The coupon takes $150 off, so they can get it for $249. So the website for your listeners is rizona.health forward slash advisor, and you'll put that in the notes. So then go there, and the coupon will be on that website. Plus, if they did it by now, it'll apply it automatically. But there's also a tab on there if they want to go learn more. I have way too much information. I have just I just released a new book a couple of weeks ago that they can go get that. There's all kinds of research. Um, I have tons on my website. If you go to PubMed and type in PEMF, you're going to find 6,000 articles. There's 30,000 published papers in the world on this technology. It's not voodoo, but it's, if you think about it that way as anesthesia, MRIs, cell phones, and all that other stuff that didn't exist either. This yeah. is here. The world's changing today with this stuff and you give it a try. Yes. It, it's definitely, you know, it's amazing. And you have the testimonials and you have, you know, people, people, you know, swearing by it and, and, you know, and all the scientific evidence, you know, that proves that, you know, this is not something that was just pulled out of the air. There's scientific backed evidence to prove that it actually works. And I think that's what's most important because there are so many products out there, but there's no scientific evidence to back it where you have the scientific evidence, you have the testimonials on your site and people can go on your site to see that. And you have the articles and the links to the articles where if they want to look at it, they can actually go and look at the scientific backed evidence to prove that the, the product works. There, there is, and just one comment to that, if somebody goes like a Facebook hater and they go, okay, for this ailment, where's the 25 double blind studies? Like, I don't have them. I mean, I'm not a clinical hospital. It, it, those didn't exist, but if you just look at it this way, go look at the other studies that are out there. And the analogy I use is that study was there, it's frequency. Do you agree that a decent guitarist could pick up somebody else's guitar and play the same song? Yes. Right. So if you just, and then I always tell people when they get too far down that rabbit hole, forget it. Because even if there's a million double blind studies, they're never a hundred percent. It doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Right. So you still in the end, got to try it. Yes. So the important point we need to hit on, try it for 30 days. If it doesn't work for you, send it back for a refund. I mean, I don't want anyone's money if it didn't help. You. Yeah. 
And you know what? You know, people have to realize common sense. Everybody's different. Everybody reacts differently. So you can't expect, you know, just like a medication, you can't expect everything to react the same for every individual. So you can't base something on just one person or a group of people. Everybody is different. Everybody's body's different. We all react differently. We all think differently. And you have to keep an open mind. And the only way to find out if it works is to try it. So if yes. you have a condition and you're suffering, you know, for me, you know, if I was struggling with something and, and I was, I tried everything. I did my research and I, I was open to everything because I just wanted to feel better. And if you really, if, if you, if you don't want to go through life dragging your feet and you want to feel good and you want to have a good quality life, then you have to really be open and try things that, especially when they're backed by science and they're backed by testimonials, why not give it a try? Yeah, I agree. Okay, cool. So tell everybody before we go, tell them what your website is one more time, just so they have it stuck in their brain. Okay. It's Rezona, like short for resonance, R-E-S-O-N-A dot health. There's no dot com in there. They suffix is dot health. So it's Rezona dot health. And before we go, is there any takeaways, anything that you'd like to tell the audience before we end our, our podcast today? Now, just to hit, hit on what you just said at the end is, you know, I always use this analogy, a comedian in the 1970s named Rich Hall had these sniglets. Mm -hmm. They were words that don't exist in the dictionary, but should. And one of them came up was bozone, which is <laughs> visible gas that surrounds people that stops new ideas from getting in. So yeah. it's like, get rid of the bozone, give it a try, see if it works. Um, I mean, it's, that's the only advice I could give. That's usually where I get in a conversation. If somebody's drilling me and drilling me and drilling me. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have data on that piece of it. Just try it. And right. See it and like I said, we get, I don't think it mentioned, we get, I'm getting surprising things. I'm like, what? I mean, one last thing is I had two 75 year old women in the last month tell me it got rid of their varicose veins in their legs. Wow. I'm like, huh? Okay. And they send me some pictures and they don't have before pictures because they never thought it would happen. Yeah. You got the, the have nice looking legs for 75 year old ladies in the afternoon. <laughs> before picture, but I can't fake Photoshop anything. I can't live myself if I did that. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's great because, you know, back in the day, they used to go for surgery and they actually used to remove the veins. And it was so unhealthy because if once you start removing those veins, if, you know, if you ever need them, you know, it, it could cause medical problems later on in life also. So to have something, you know, to have the vibe and it could actually even, it can heal varicose veins. That's, that's amazing. That's truly amazing. Yeah. We don't have near enough data to say that, but I got two women that I know of. Call right. Me on that. I'll put those testimonials on the website. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm very excited for you and I can't wait to try the machine myself. So I, I thank you so much for coming on the show. I look forward to our next, our podcast, you know, because we're going to be doing a whole series for you. And if anyone has any questions and they'd like any information, you know, please leave a message in the comment box, or is there any other way just go on your website to contact you? Yeah. And the, the website's info or the email, excuse me, is info at rezona.health. That's, per, you can call me if you want, but it's preferred to email me because there's a 98% chance the answer is already on the website in video format or something that I can give you a better answer than me explaining it on the phone. And if right. you call, I'm probably on the phone with another customer because. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Today has been great. Thank you so much, Mark, for being on the show. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for what you're doing. You know, you're helping, you know, thousands of people regain their health back and, you know, it, it it's it, I'm speechless. There's, there's no words to describe. It's a wonderful accomplishment and you're changing lives and, and it's a beautiful thing. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. You too. Thanks again for having me. Oh, always. It's a pleasure. Have a great day. And you too. Bye. Bye-bye.